The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Fisher. We begin as we have many times over the past two years with a grim dose of reality. Coronavirus continues to steal the lives of friends and family members in our area. And this morning we learned two dozen more people have died from COVID-19 here in Kern. The 24 new deaths reported today brings our county county's total to 1730 lives lost since the beginning of the pandemic. 242 people are in the hospital with more severe symptoms of the virus. 56 more are in the ICU. Meantime, we learned of another 316 people who have been infected with COVID. Our daily average continues to be steady with no sign of slowing ahead of this holiday season. Now to severe warnings yesterday aimed at drug dealers in Orange County who lace drugs with the powerful and deadly narcotic fentanyl. The district attorney there saying those drug dealers could now face murder charges. At a news conference yesterday, DA Todd Spitzer said the number of fentanyl related deaths in California has skyrocketed from 239 in 2016 to nearly 4,000 last year. Many were people who thought they were taking counterfeit prescription pills and they were actually taking pills laced with fentanyl. Now people who enter plea deals in drug cases will be given a form to sign acknowledging the danger fentanyl poses. If that person later sells it to someone who dies, they could face murder charges. If you give manufacture sell drugs and it has fentanyl, we're telling you right now at a prior occasion, you could be charged with murder. When we are in court, we're planning on and asking any time any drug is sold that that admonishment will be given because almost every drug today that is being sold on the black market contains fentanyl. And earlier this morning on 17 News at Sunrise, I spoke with Sheriff Youngblood about the increase of fentanyl here in our community. He said it is a, it is a dangerous drug and more people are being killed. I think we're at 180 deaths this year in Kern County from uh, from this drug. And it's bigger than that because you you as a relative are endangered with having the drug even anywhere near your, your, your house. We've had a deputy recently who found fentanyl, cleared the scene, and then we couldn't locate him for two hours or, or a couple hours. And we found him out in the middle of nowhere by tracking his GPS because he was having a reaction. A to deputy. A deputy for, for fentanyl. And we, we, we carry Narcan, uh, we use it on, on these cases. It's, uh, it's really a scary drug that can kill you just by contact. We will have more on the fentanyl crisis here in Kern and what our local prosecutors are saying about these cases. That is tonight on 17 News at 5. And as you know, 17's Robert Price knows the pain fentanyl can cause all too well. He took an in-depth look on the rising use of the drug here in Kern and the lives the drug has taken. To learn more about how this impacts our area, you can head to our website kget.com forward slash fentanyl for Robert's five part series called Fentanyl, the counterfeit killer. And again, he'll have more tonight on 17 News at 5. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. In education news this afternoon, there was a show of support for a trustee with the Kern County Board of Education. Mary Little claims she is being targeted for her opinion on the vaccine mandate. 17's Marco Torres has the story. Mary Little publicly supports those who want to protest the vaccine mandate, but Little argues because of her views, she is being targeted by fellow members of the County Board of Education. Um, I do have a First Amendment laws in the Constitution, and I have the right to free speech. Thank you. Little's attorney Tracy Henderson sent a cease and desist letter to the board demanding members stop censoring and harassing Little. 
Among those named in the order, Superintendent of Schools Mary Barlow and Board President Ron Frolich. The board held a special meeting Tuesday evening where the public was invited to speak. However, Henderson, who lives in Carmel, says she was given less than 24-hour notice and was denied a chance to participate via Zoom or by telephone. I viewed this, in my mind, as an olive branch of resolution, right? Because typically you, you talk face-to-face -face when you have a conflict. So I was excited about the opportunity to say, look, we really just need you. These are the, the, piece, the conduct that's at issue. Can we please refrain? And let's all go forward being professional and collegial. And they prevented that conversation from happening. But those who support Little's right to voice her opinion were there to let her know. She's being opposed because she has an opposing opinion. I don't think this is right to smash an opposing voice, and that's why we're here supporting her. Now, the board is asking Little when she speaks to separate her personal opinion from her role as a trustee, which Henderson says they can work with if the harassment and censorship stops. 17 News asked for comment from the superintendent, Mary Barlow, or other school board members, but they declined. From KCSOS, Marco Torres, 17 News. Meantime, protesters are uh, going to other school board meetings across Kern County and talking about the vaccine mandate. Dozens of teachers and parents packed last night's meeting of the Panama Buena Vista Union School Board. They're fighting for the right to make their own choices when it comes to giving their children the COVID vaccine and say they do not want to be forced to comply with the governor's mandate. We're here just because we want to choose. We want to choose what um, goes into our children's body. We want to choose what's going on with their health. Um, we're concerned because this is, in a lot of our views, an unnecessary vaccine. We're going to follow the state and federal mandates imposed upon all public and private schools when it is under a state mandate law. And finally, and I want to say almost most importantly, is to continue the focus on providing our students and staff a safe learning environment. 17's Marco Torres will have more on the vaccine mandate protests happening throughout the county today. That You can find that coverage on 17 News as another local school board is set to meet later this evening. And there is an urgent plea from the Bakersfield Animal Care Center. The shelter posted on Facebook, it is in desperate need of dog fosters, and they may have to, quote, make serious decisions if they can't find volunteers. The shelter, located at 201 South Mount Vernon Avenue, currently has more than 200 dogs, and they say they're running out of space. The shelter says it provides all of the supplies needed for those who are willing to foster. If you can help out, call 832-7387. And the shelter will match you with a pup that fits your needs. And the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is being observed this week. For the second day in a row, Arlington National Cemetery is allowing private citizens to file past the tomb and lay flowers in honor of those buried at this hollowed site. This is the first time in 78 years people have been allowed in this area, which is usually reserved by members of the old guard and dignitaries. Tomorrow, a processional and military flyover will also be held to commemorate the somber anniversary. Bakersfield's annual Veterans Day Parade returns in person tomorrow after going virtual last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's theme is Veterans Are Valued Treasures. Local veteran Bob Berman will serve as Grand Marshal. You may remember Chris Byrne had a story on him not too long ago. He's the dancer. He's Kern County's only living Pearl Harbor survivor. Organizer Ricardo Ibarra expects hundreds of participants from floats to bands, all to celebrate our local veterans. We have a lot of groups uh, involved this year. Uh, you know, we have the American Legion groups and then, you know, we have bands, uh, high school bands, junior high school bands, honor fly, Vietnam veterans, uh, 82nd Airborne. Festivities start at American Legion bright and early at 6 a.m. Actually, might even be dark and early, where veterans can get a free pancake breakfast. The parade will then begin right outside our studios at 21st and L Streets. Again, that is happening at 10 a.m. The parade will head down 21st Street, turn around, and then follow 20th Street to O Street. And 17's Jim Scott will MC the parade. We will also be live streaming it, so you can watch it on our Facebook page and website. So if you can't come on out, no worries. If you still want to watch it, you can watch on our live stream. So again, the parade is starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
here in downtown Bakersfield. And uh, in the meantime, everyone can enjoy our national parks for free tomorrow in honor of Veterans Day. Entry fees are waived at more than 100 national parks, including Yosemite, Death Valley, and Joshua Tree. Military remembrance sites are also free. In your 17 Health Watch this afternoon in Houchin Community Blood Bank, once again putting out the call for blood donations, saying its supplies have reached critically low levels. In response to the shortage, it is extending its hours on Thursday and Friday. So again, tomorrow and Friday. The new hours will be from 9 a.m. till 8 p.m. on both days. So we've got a couple extra hours in the evening to donate. Houghton says they will be hosting blood drives in mobile units. The first stop is at Patriot Elementary School, happening later today from 2 to 6 p.m. For the full schedule, you can head to KGET.com. So again, as they say, when you give, people live, and they are at critical levels. So if you can, go out to Houchin and donate. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.